and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I am doing another experiment. How odd. And uh, no, I'm not pouring out of a beer bottle. I'm pouring a bottle cooler. Now, for those of you in countries that don't use these, I think they're an Australian, New Zealand idiosyncrasy. But I'm willing to be corrected. This is um, that material that they made make wetsuits out of and it's just been made into a ring with a base uh, to keep your beer cool because in warm countries they warm up but it, and it also stops it from condensing and getting like your hands all wet from the condensation and all that sort of stuff so I am not advertising any form of beer with this video. This is not a sponsored video in any way, shape or form. This is a recycle video. Um, uh, this month's challenge on acrylic pouring for fun is uh, to upcycle or recycle, upcycle whatever you're pouring on so that's what I'm doing with this pour and uh, I had to scrub this it was looking almost that color all over by my husband's dirty hands so it's been given a good scrub and still a bit stained but hey if we get some color leaching we get some color leaching so that is why I have chosen the colors I have chosen <laughs> I have got um, burnt sienna I have got grass green with iridescent median already mixed in, which makes a really yummy, almost emerald greeny type colour. We have cerulean blue. Oops, what's happened to my blue? Might need to water that down a little bit. Um, and of course we have white. Just something to break up all those dark colours and give it a little bit of interest. Uh, now, I am going to be pouring a 3D object. And 3D objects are notoriously interesting. Uh, if you wanted to, you could pull it apart, unstitch it, lay it out flat and... Pour it flat, get a really funky look, and then recreate it. But uh, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. That's far too much work. So we're going to do a 3D pour and see what gets created. And if it looks cool, I might throw it in the Santa sack. So let's check it out and see. Uh, I'm going to... really want to do and I might do one with these colors at a later time I'd really love to be able to do a flip cup and that's just not going to happen on a 3d object so we're going to have to do something different and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the green and I'm just going to put lots of layers oh what about lots of silicon? That's always a good idea. Uh, now, different people use different silicons. You can use coconut oils. You can use um, treadmill oils. You can use silicon from like somewhere like CRC or WD-40, as long as it has silicon in it, not just the straight WD-40. That doesn't work. Um, as long as it has a silicon oil in it. In fact, I might do a comparison oil testing thing at some point soon. So let's get some brown in there. And some blue in there. And some white in there. 
and let's go around again. Green. Brown. Pouring it from reasonably up high, which gives it some penetration capacities. And as you'll see, I am using a bent tin. These tins are even still got one here with its label on it. It's my um my ring holder. These are just flavoured tuna tins. Um, but basically any tin that has flat sides, and if you cut the lid off using a um a seal cutting can opener rather than one that cuts through the lid or cuts through the side, you want one that cuts the actual seal. Can you get get a close up of that see how it's actually cut through the seal and that leaves a smooth safe edge on there but it also leaves a smooth reasonably safe edge on the lid and you can then just pop the lid back on press it down and it's almost almost not going to say it's perfect but it's an almost airtight seal when it pops back in um, especially once the lid's been used a couple of times, got a bit of paint stuck on the edges. Um, and so that is what I use for my tins. And as you can see, you can just um, bend them and make a little bit of a spout. And that's fine if you have either a tapering up object or just a straight object. But as we found with the jug recently, if the if there's a curving out, this does not work very well. So I'm going to move you down to the side camera and let's get pouring. Okay, so what have I got here? I've got my Lazy Susan, which is upside down. And I just like it upside down. It seems to work for me that way around. I've got an old tile that has been used over and over again. And you could just use the tile. Um, but I've got some freezer paper. And I thought, well, I will use that as my pour onto. And then it makes it easy to clean. Seeing as it's already been used, this paper's been used once or twice already. Then I'm putting one of my tins on there just as a rising agent and it is slightly bigger a slightly smaller all the way around than the beer holder so any paint can drip off or run under so that we don't have this sitting making a lip when it's drying that's quite an important thing to do I'm going to do something that I haven't done before um, and that is I'm going to start with a ring maybe even do three rings a three ring circus it might end up being a bit of a circus depends how well I pour <laughs> how much fun can we have let's have a look Ah, this is not coming out of the tin. It's coming straight. It's, it's running straight down the tin. What am I not doing? That I normally do. Uh, nope, that is not working. It is just going straight onto. Pouring straight out of the tin onto the freezer paper. It's not even making this at all wet. So let's... Use some of it to create a moisture layer. Sometimes when you've got a 3D object creating what I call a moisture layer, um, which is where you rub some paint on first, just so that the... Um, the pouring paint has somewhere to run let's just and 
and there's not quite so much friction stopping it from running around running down so maybe that's what the paint tin was trying to tell me that that's what was required what's right about this i'm not getting come on michelle listen up we need a moisture ring especially on material i have found that that is definitely a situation Um, with material it does absorb super super quickly so giving it something to absorb and first before you pour definitely creates a different option okay and I've just made the the pouring loop a little bit tighter Take it up a notch. Just got green coming out at the moment. It's interesting. And then right up to the top. Still just the green. Well, I must say the green and the white make a pretty, pretty fabulous colour. If I may say so myself. So this is Reeves Acrylic um, Fine Artist Paint. And the green is grass green. And I've mixed in the iridescent medium. And then when it's mixed with the white, it's gone quite a luminescency type green. Now, I've just picked it up and turned it over. I'm going to let some of that paint come back down. And then I'm going to turn it over on its side. And roll any blobs. There's a couple of patches that are a bit light on paint. I'm just wondering whether this is going to... Maybe... And then we'll turn it back down again. See what that does. Still a bit of movement going on in here before I torch it I'm just gonna leave some of that large amount of paint to 
come off first. Just have to bring it over to you and show you while it's doing that. Oops, focusing on my flowers in the background. Well, I personally think that's a lot more attractive than that advertising that was on there before. What about you? Should we see if we can get any cells out of that? I think there's going to be definitely some air bubbles popping. Now. See, I can, I'm keeping the actual flame well away from the paint. It's not there to burn the paint. It's not there to dry the paint. Oh, there we go. I wonder how this is going to dry. I'm intrigued. This is the same stuff that they use to make um, mouse pads as well. Well, the boring flat ones. So I'm going to move that over out of the way and I'm going to see if we can get anything out of this lot. I'm seeing some quite funky coloured stuff. So I'm going to take you back upstairs so you can get a look down into what we're doing. All right. So this is what dripped off and sometimes when I'm doing 3D items I wonder whether I'm doing the 3D item just to create the runoff. <laughs> so the other thing I want to show you is what's inside the pot. That's a quite a funky swirl. It's a bit... So I'm going to give that a bit of a torch and see if what comes up. Oh, look at that. Lots came up. Hmm. Let's open that tin up a little bit more so we can see. So I'm going to capture that bit there first. There we go. And I'm going to put it on a round one, round one. A round what, some of you are asking. This is a round cabochon. A cabochon is a style of cut. Um, it's where it's flat on the bottom and smoothly rounded on the top. So you can see 
We've got flat on this side and then round it on the other side. And I just buy these on Amazon. There's a link in the description. And I do highly recommend that you buy them uh, as a set with their back if you're going to be putting them into a, a backing like I do. Um, just because then they're selling them as this bit fits in this bit and you don't have to worry too much about whether or not you're getting the right sizes to go with each other. And all I've done is used a bit of poster putty or blue tack as we call it in New Zealand and one of my stir sticks just to hold it by the round stick part so I can dip it into our tin. And I'm just going to go in and touch it to the paint just like that. And then when I peel it off, I've picked up what I saw. So it's always a cool way to use your leftover paint. Anything else I want out of that one? No, nope. I'm going to put that aside for now. And let's go have a look in here. Now this piece here, let's see if I can get it without the reflection quite so much. This piece here is quite funky. So I'm going to grab that. Um, I'm just wondering what shape to put that on. Actually a love heart I think. Something about loving the earth is really jumping into my my awareness. You've got blues and browns and greens there. That kind of depicts the planet. So if I put it on a love heart. Love hearts are one of the hardest ones to, to do because I tend to find that when you go to put it in the cabochon, you wish you had it up the other way, but in, into the thing. But anyway, so if I put... I'm going to put it in that way or that way. I think I'm going to put it in that way. And hopefully that kind of gives a sense. of the layers of land, of rivers flowing through and all that kind of stuff. God, I'm being very meaningful today. It's interesting, not usually my style. Um, What else is happening in here that would be super cool? Oops, sorry. Hmm. I'm going to give it a bit of a torch and see what shows up. And sometimes a bit of a tilt can spread things out.
What are you seeing? I'm not really seeing anything that's exciting me, to be honest. So I am going to actually tip this back into the pot. I've got paint in there. I've got paint here. And I'm going to see what I can create in the next video with this. So I dare you. Sign up. Come see what I do with this paint. Subscribe, dude, subscribe. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, where is this at at the moment? It is looking very yuck, to be honest. It's interesting. So, we will see how this dries out. I'm going to see if I can stand it up the other way. Hmm. That's kind of cracking looking there, isn't it? I wonder what sort of white paint I put in there. Maybe that wasn't my Reeves. Hmm. All right, I'm going to turn it up the other side way. Try and stand it in something so that it hangs the other way and lets it dry. And I'll be back when it's dry, which will be for you. Three, two, one. All right, so here it is. Uh, not elegant. It's definitely more interesting than that concrete branded thing that it was. I have no idea how long it's going to last or what it's going to look like or feel like in a couple of weeks time. It's still quite malleable but it is only the next day. Uh, remind me in the comments to keep you updated. Um, I can always bring it along to another video or if you remind me I can bring it to a live or something like that so let's put it a drink in it and toast the new vessel holder <laughs> it keeps it warm, it keeps it cool keeps your hand warm and how does it get any better than that really it's beautiful it's pretty it's funky it's even got a glitteriness from the green so cheers guys merry christmas i am going live tomorrow if you want to come and play with me those of you that are on my newsletter will have already received an email with the time and stuff but it is tomorrow so keep an eye out on your notifications if you're a subscriber and come join me come play let's see what fun we can have and how much magic we can create i adore you all and i will see you in another video cheers bye bye